Hey visionaries, Charles Laughlin here with Royal Realty Group. Whether you're an investor, a first time home buyer, or an agent looking for a team, our goal here is to help you attain wealth using real estate. Follow us on all social media platforms at Royal Realty Group TX. Now enjoy the show with Cup and Mo. So I stopped over at Jay's spot. I knew we wanted to get Jay on the show at one point. And I see this guy packing up a gang of stuff. And I saw the logo and I was like, that's gotta be Puente. Gotta be. And he, Prometheus, like all, all the stuff you talked about. Hey man, my name's Ryan. This is my podcast. He's packing up. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to bother him. Like, hey, we're going to have Jay on the show. Would you mind? Sure, no problem. You know, he's packing stuff up or whatnot. Here's my phone number. Get with me. Da, da, da. And we finally made it happen. He's been great to talk to on the phone. And uh, it's, it's good to, to be sitting down with you and actually enjoying a stick with you again. Absolutely. And, you know, again, you know, sometimes we're just out and stuff just happens. That's right. appreciate being here it's just uh i have to apologize we've kind of scheduled this multiple times and schedule has been kind of tough um i have a little minor problem that uh i don't i don't fly so i'm the i'm you could say i'm the john madden of the cigar accessory business okay uh, I'm, I'm working on that um it's not something that i've never done before but i don't so wherever you see me out there whether it be oklahoma or miami or louisiana mississippi and so on and so on and so on I'll be in my Dodge Challenger just driving around. Well, you're wow. the director of sales. You can afford it to get a car to drive. <laughs> Probably doesn't start till you show up anyway, right? Yeah, it's 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 been fun, man. I gotta tell you. So it's do you fun. you enjoy being in the car, driving long hours, and or is this uh, necessary no, I, evil? I no, I do. Uh, in order to do what I do because of the situation I'm in, that I'm not a big fan of airplanes, um, I do spend a lot of time in the car. However, that also means you do spend a lot of time away from your family. Yes. So that's something that if, if, and if anything hurts from this, it's spending so much time away from your family. Um, we just recently moved to Granbury. We're trying to enjoy this new house. I really haven't had a chance to enjoy the new house. Yeah. Um, so that is kind of playing a little bit of, of a role, but uh, I enjoy this industry so much that you, you put in the effort and, and you put in the time and it's, it's paying off big time because our, our products are going out there uh, more and more as you go out there as you get folks to help you because like manny was saying to me today brother you're not superman uh you need uh, troops on there on the, on the field and and i'm very happy with uh our, our new recruit belkis uh i kind of snatched her from the uh from the education industry okay mm. and uh, she's a a advocate for fuente cigars cigars in general this person has the temperament for the job very soft-spoken uh, incredible personality and I, I can I've, I've met so many people in this industry that have been in this industry forever but I was looking for somebody who had the same personality that our products do yeah you know the the very vibrant very robust exactly and and I found that person and that day I interviewed a couple people and uh, she hands hands in a, above, above everybody else and, and I just we talked on the way over here and She's in Atlanta right now, and uh, we have brokers out there that I love to death uh, that are that are doing good stuff for us. So the plan is to continue growing. Um, we're in Atlanta right now. Uh, Manny and I are going to be in, in Arizona in a few weeks. Um, we have a, a great event coming up uh, with Club Humidor in San Antonio, one of our biggest uh, s supporters there. So all's good so far. So clear this up for me officially, right? So when I met him, I was like, oh, Fuente, like, this is this is a slam dunk. Oh, we got to have him on the show. So we're texting back and forth. And he's like, you know, like, we're about accessories. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, I could have sworn this guy had cigars on the day I met him. But no. So 
clear it up for me. You are the national sales director for, say the name one more time. Okay, so I'm the director of sales for the Fuente Opusex Society right. by Manity Arte. That's the official name. The thing is that because that name comes with such a powerful Fuente, the, the name, the the family, the first family of cigars. Right. Um, everybody has this misconception that we are or we have anything to do with cigars, and that cannot be farther from the truth. The truth is that I am also a Fuente lover. I smoke all I smoke. All yep. you'll see me smoking. Because when I met you, you're smoking a Fuente. It's and I was Fuente, like, this makes all the sense it, in the world. It doesn't matter to me whether it's it's from the Fuente family directly or J.C. Newman or, or Fuente derivative. I smoke Fuente. And if you work for me and if you work for the Opus X Society, I can't say, hey, you got to smoke Fuente, you got to smoke Fuente. But I'm going to let you decide for yourself what cigars you're going to smoke. But try this one and try this one and try this one. <laughs> And, and, and it's, you, you buy into the, this thing that's this aura of what the Fuente name is. And, and truth be told, I've never been to the factory because I've been invited by Carlitos himself to go. I've been invited by Manny. I don't fly. So until I master that, I will not be able to experience what everybody says is Disneyland for the adults. Yeah. Uh, and it's something I'm going to do. And I'm going to do for sure. So you come in here with this, this piece of art. It's a humidor, right? But it's really a piece of art. <laughs> Um, you know, there's beautiful cutters, lighters, cigar cases or whatnot. Obviously, like I said, that name Fuente carries so much weight. How do you have to go about explaining to people? I'm sure you do it on a daily basis. Oh, like, yeah. hey, I'm high grade accessories. Yeah. I'm the guy for it. how you had to go about that line of demarcation, if you will, between cigars it's, it's and all easy. the accessories. It's easy. Manny's name right now is synonymous with, you know, passion, high end. You know, Forbes magazine, Hublot watches. You guys are yeah, very familiar absolutely. with Hublot Big watches. Hublot watches. All right. So Hublot watches. Manny has designed five different Hublot watches. I like the Big Bang. That's my favorite line of Hublots. All of which are their top sellers. Oh, wow. All of which have to do with the Fuente Opus X name of some so, some sort. Okay. Just recently, he did an homage to uh, uh, Cacalito Fuente Senior. And that watch has been a big hit. So Manny has done design watches for Hublot. Um, very simple is our, our items, our products come with the Fuente name. So to, to explain it to the folks out there that do not know who we are, we are similar to, let's say, Prometheus, who I am a big fan of. They're God of Fire, they're Lost City. Uh, I've owned a lot of their stuff and I still do. The difference is that we are, we don't have any cigars. We just have the license for Opus X. We also have the license for Don Carlos, the Hemingway, and the Grand Reserve, which is the humidor you see here. I'd show you the Don Carlos, but something really spectacular happened with the Don Carlos, especially when, when we started this accelerating process in November. When I got there is the Hemingway was our number one humidor. It was selling like crazy. Then all of a sudden I get there and I start it's this thing with Don Carlos, Don Carlos. And unpacking these things is one of the best things ever. When you see the store owner after they place an order with you and they get this and they unbox it down to, and that's what ma makes Manny above everybody else, makes him different from everybody else, is his attention to detail. His, his detail down to the boxing, to the paper, to everything he uses to, obviously he designs this stuff. The Opus X 25 year anniversary cigar, ST DuPont. You're familiar with that one? Absolutely. Uh, $75,000 uh, humidors, yeah. $9,000 humidors, and, and the labels, and so on and so on. The latest, which is the Opus X uh, Forbidden, the box, the label, that's many. So we everything have. Everything down to the T. Everything down to this guy, which makes, and I'll explain to you where I came about and, and, and our story, is that's what turns me on about our stuff, is down to the packaging. Our stuff is just different and it's above and beyond. And um, so the the Hemingway was our number one s selling humidor. And these are not for the faint of heart. These humidors carry a price tag, obviously. Sure. But people buy them and people go out of the way to buy them. So this one that you see here is the Grand Reserva. It's it's obviously, it's a hundred years old. The, put, the name put that the up design. so we can see it. A beautiful piece of art. So this is the design of the of the uh, Grand Reserve humidor. 
which is actually my personal favorite. It's it's the one that I liked that I was asked when when I started, which is your favorite? This is one of my favorite because I love history. I love everything about history, whether it's the cigar industry or any other industry. History is is I love it. And this is one of, our, of the most historic uh, faces in that company. So right now I would show you the Don Carlos, but we're down to minimal numbers left of the Don Carlos. Same thing with the lighters that go with the humidor, the cutters, our, our colors and cutters and lighters are LE blue. Um, we do a lot of work with them. We love their work, but that's, that's the beautiful. humidor right there. It's absolutely beautiful. Go yeah. So artwork. this carries about 150 sticks. It's two tier. It's Spanish cedar with bronze detailing. Every humidor comes with a, a Bluetooth enabled hygrometer. Oh. So you're, you're able to use it uh, uh, with your phone and it comes with 12 of the Babetta packs. Okay. You guys are, you yes, know what absolutely. the Babetta packs are. The Babetta packs are the MVP in any humidor in my opinion. And this carries six slots where it's, you can put six of the Babetta packs in there for two weeks. It'll say season packs on there. You put them in there for two weeks, close the humidor with no cigars. That seasons the humidor with perfection. Okay. Okay. Take the, the, the six packs out, you throw them in the garbage. And then it comes with an additional 12 packs. So you put six in there and you close it with the sticks. And every three months you change it. And that's it. So with your seasoning process, you don't have to use distilled water, wipe Nothing. it down. You know the crystals that 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 they also yeah, have yeah, out yeah. there that I used to use yeah. when I had so many different humidors? Dries right. them out. Nothing. This, all it needs is the Bavetta packs. You put them in there, you close the, the humidor, and you're good to go. It's, now, it's spectacular. Is it something about the Spanish cedar wood that does that? Or why is this humidor or all the uh, Fuente humidors... Are they all kind of constructed in that manner? Yeah, the, the most important thing besides obviously the humidification process is for any humidor, you have to seal it, right? It's gotta be sealed in order for it to work. This thing is top heavy. So without breaking this, all I gotta do is slam that or throw it down and it's completely sealed. There's no air going in there. Why? Because it's top heavy and it's completely sealed. Every time you use it, you use it. I have one right now that, that I use, which is this one. And I have the one that's coming out, which we will not talk about. <laughs> and, uh, perks and of the it's, job. It's, well, it's perks of the job, but I happen to always be there in the Miami uh, warehouse. And I used to call it a f factory, but uh, Dave Levy, who's our CEO, he loves when I call it the factory. But uh, it's it's this place that, that, that we have in there. It's called a vault. And it's where Manny's designs are. And... Um, we have these humidors in there and that's the first thing I learned uh, of them because I want to, I want the customer, whether it be the shop owner or the patron, because I've, I've been at shops where I've helped the store owner sell it to the patron because I love to communicate with the patrons when I'm at a shop. Right. It's all about the brick and mortar at the end of the day. We want to support them in every which way we can. We go there, we buy cigars. Uh, we help the owners. We have events at, at the owner's place. And I, like everybody else that works with us, they help sell our products because you can't just put them behind a window and expect somebody to say, OK, hey, I'll take one of those, right. you know, because it comes with a nice little price tag. But when you take the humidor out, when you show it to the person, when you let them carry it, when you let them smell it, when you let them feel it, there's a different animal there. And that's when the person goes, wait a minute. Yeah, it's X amount of money, but you're you're buying something that that comes with, you know, some prestige and it and it actually works. That's right. So obviously you're well versed on cigars and the accessories and all that, but you didn't get there overnight. Right. And one of the underlying things of this entire show is, you know, on some level, everyone we've had on the show has had to put in the work to get to where they are. How did you first get introduced to cigars? And can you kind of talk about the ladder that you climb, so to speak, to get to where you are? Because you, again, you don't wake up and be the national sales director. I'm I'm very familiar with that ladder that you're referring to. Um, I came from the insurance industry. I worked for only two different insurance companies in my life. Uh, I'm 53 years old. I've been working in insurance. I've been working since I'm 16 years old. Started my first insurance job when I was 18. Wow. And it was just going up that corporate ladder, going up that corporate ladder. But my my passion has always been two things photography and cigars cigars has been my passion since 
I'm 16 years old, like I was telling you guys before the show, my father, who's no longer with us, uh, who I get everything from, from my sales personality, my personality, everything that I am is due to him. And he's missed, trust me, it's 22 years this year. Um, he taught me everything about the cigar. My grandfather before him. Grandfather passed away at 98 years old. So my father bought me my first cigar when I was 16 years old, like I was telling him, it was, it was Bauza. Bauza was the name of that cigar. He bought it at a grocery store. Ah. Man, that thing, I threw up so many times that day, I can't even tell you guys. I must have turned every shade of blue. I felt so bad, and I said, never again. That lasted a year. Um, that second year, um, I was already working for an insurance company, and uh, my boss at the time wanted to open up a cigar lounge in Miami Beach, which it's been sold like 10 times over since right. then. But she used to bring me cigars, and, and at that time I was smoking Churchill's. I didn't care about the brand. I didn't know anything. I was like, Jesus, I want the big, I'm a big guy. I'm 6'4". I want the big, uh, the big sticks. So I've been smoking cigars for a long time, but I've always wanted to learn. And you learn from people who smoke cigars, from the guys that have been doing it forever. Mm -hmm. So I never fixated or obsessed about one cigar ever. I wanted to try them all. So when you go somewhere and you have a conversation with someone about cigars, you know what you're talking about how to light it, how to cut it, uh, what to cut it with. And if you ask my brother, he, to this day, he, like you, he cuts his cigars with his teeth and he lights it with a match. Well, I, I don't, won't, I don't use my teeth. I know, I saw that. <laughs> I, I, I won't go that far. And my brother smokes certain cigars and whatnot, but I, I use a cutter and I use a lighter. And like, like most people do nowadays. Um, but I, I try to smoke everything on the planet. So when you're sitting down with people that know a lot more than you about cigars, you can say, hey, I like it. I don't like it. I'm not going to sit there and tell you, you know, this has notes of honey and leather. And <laughs> no, I'm not that guy. I'll tell you, hey, listen, I like the cigar. Uh, it's it's a great smoke for the for the price. And because you, you got to there's different patrons out there, price conscious patrons. Sure. And then there's others that are Fuente lovers, Padron lovers, Drew Estate lovers and so on and so on and so on. So you gotta be mindful and respectful for that. So how that came about is fast forward many years. Uh, my ex-wife was a school teacher. Manny was a school teacher. His wife was a school teacher. So his wife and my wife kind of started talking. And I guess one day they said, well, your husband likes photography. He's a photographer. Hey, my husband's an insurance guy, but he's a really good photographer, but he's more of a sports guy. You know, he does uh, athletes and whatnot. One day they introduced us. This was a long time. It was like 25 years ago. And next thing I know, it was just like this mesh thing. We just hit it off from day one. Manny's creativity is above the charts. I mean, it doesn't matter. You sit down with the guy and you tell him ideas and all of a sudden he's already imagining what he's going to design and has it for you 24 hours later. Wow. I've never seen anything like it. And in a matter of a, a blip of a second, it's his gift. It's this amazing gift. And um, so we had a lot of things in common, he and I, photography obviously being one, and love for cigars. So Manny had his first cigar. Manny's from Cuba, he came from Cuba. He had his first cigar in the backyard of my house, next to our pool, next to my four dogs, who's a, he's also a dog lover. So we're having cigars, and I will leave the name of the cigar out of this for, for the conversation, because <laughs> I know exactly the cigar we were smoking. And, uh, and we start talking and I tell him, Manny, you, you have a gift because he wanted to be the premier cigar photographer, which later he became that person. Right. And I said, you're going to work. If this is exactly what you want to do, you're going to work with the best names in the biz. You're going to work with uh, 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 Padron. You're going to work with uh, Alec Bradley and you're going to work with uh, hi, 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 my father, which I'm a big fan of. Sure. You're going to work with all those guys. And look, I'm getting goosebumps. He worked with every single one of those guys. Mm -hmm. But when you work with a guy named Carlito Fuente, this is me talking to him and Opus X, you're going to be in Cigar Snob, Cigar Aficionado, mm -hmm. and so on, and so on, and so on. And that's the day you're going to look back and say, I did it. Well, here we are 20 plus years later. And he did it. And he is the designer for the most part, for Carlitos and the Opus X. You know, all the, the big Opus X 25 year anniversary. And, and look what he's done for us. The, the, 
To have the license to do what we do with a name like this one takes a little bit of a punch. And he has that punch. And and now I'm privileged to work with him. It, it's been it's been pretty awesome. So when so obviously you and Manny are are super tight, right? So how does it become okay, Roy? Uh, you are now the, the the director of sales. How 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 does that happen? Oh, it happened honestly last June, two thousand and twenty one. Okay. Um, we my wife and I were going on vacation to Miami, and like I said, I've known Manny for a long time, and. Um, I went over to the, I called it the factory. It's not the factory, it's the warehouse. And I fell in love. Like, it's a beautiful place. All his work is on display. And coming from a guy who I saw him sell his first picture to his first customer. And when I was doing photography, I was going around helping him with the lights and stuff like this. I was so proud of him. And I went down to Miami and I took time away from my vacation to go visit him and say, hey, I just want to go by. I'll go, I'll get there like at 930 in the morning, wherever you open your doors and we'll have breakfast and then I'll leave by noon. Okay. That didn't work out. <laughs> so I got there like around 930. I think I left somewhere around seven. Ooh. And uh, Dave Levy was there and, and, and I was there and, and, and there was, there was a time in the conversation, obviously <clears throat> they saw the passion I had for the line, the passion I have for Manny and his work and whatnot. And they, they were looking at me with this really curious face. And I saw it during throughout the day, like had lunch. So I get up and I go to to kind of like a veranda type of thing overlooking. We're on the second floor, overlooking the bottom floor. And I just said, I, I'm, I'm a big movie reference guy. And I get this from my son. And I said, right out straight up from the movie Jaws, you're going to need a bigger boat <laughs> because his popularity is growing so fast. He already had it to begin with, but the Obasek Society really was born at the PCA of last year. So getting back to your story, I'm there and all of a sudden Dave turns around to me. He goes, let me give you a hypothetical. Now, keep in mind, I'm an insurance guy. I've been doing insurance for over 30 years. I, I You're just there to hang out with your friend. I'm here to breakfast. hang out. Yeah. And then lunch and, and so on and so on. <laughs> so they said, Dave said, and I'm, I'm noticing through my peripheral, Manny's looking at me and Dave's like, let me throw you a hypothetical. What would you say if this, this, this? And I'm like, at the time there was a director of sales already uh, out of, I believe he's from Michigan, went to University of Michigan. And um, so how would you, how would you react if I give you this hypothetical? So I answered, I'm like, I'm, I'm flattered, but you know, I have to give it some thought. I mean, my whole life has been insurance since I'm 18 years old. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm 52. Right. So it's, it's, I mean, yeah, I know cigars, but I don't know how to sell them. I don't know thinking that this was cigar. No, it's not cigars. It's accessories. I'm like, okay. So this is, if you're passionate about something, it, it, whether it be accessories in the cigar industry, insurance or, or s cars, if you have a passion for something and, and you're good at selling, you're going to do very, very well. So they approached me with that thought and I gave it some thought. I, I spoke to my wife about it. Who's my number one. I mean, I, I She's everything to me and my life has changed since I met her. And I'm like, uh, what do you think about this? And, and it's going to entail a lot of travel. It's going to, you know, this is what it's going to be. But it's Manny. It's Dave. It's Fuente. It's Oba Sex Society. It's this, this. So I told her the story and she was like, do it. Wow. So then came the hard part. <laughs> Coming back to Texas, giving it some thought because it wasn't a straight up, hey, I'm going to do this. I have a, a company that I was extremely loyal to. Like I am mm, yeah. loyal to everything I do. Right. And Conifer Insurance Company, I'm going to mention their name. They are everything to me. They still are. Uh, I've worked with these guys forever. When they were North Point Insurance Company turned into Conifer. Making that phone call when I finally decided to do this was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Knowing where I was going, going to do what I love, going to be with the guys I love. I'm going to back in Miami, the whole nine. It was so difficult. There was a lot of emotions expressed that day. I'm sure. And having to do it not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. Because I've been, I'm their oldest guy. I was their oldest employee behind the owners. I was oh, employee wow. number five. Oh, wow. <laughs> so how do you do that? So I had to come up with a lot of courage. Oh, man. A lot of thought. But yeah. I did it. And I have, I have no regrets. Do I miss them? Absolutely. Uh, but this is going to be a game-changing uh, Opus Society is going to be a game-changing thing. And, and the stuff we're going to come out with now, 
our our ashtray 250 the things we do are very limited edition yeah for the most part i learned that when i met you yeah so i want to go back to where we are in this this transitional period right a lot of our uh subscribers and by the way if you like this episode make sure you go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to our youtube channel um but but the transition there's a lot of people that listen to our show that are uh, on the cusp of, of moving into their dreams, right? Or, or, or pursuing their dreams and going Absolutely. full full bore into them. Um, what advice can you give anyone that's listening on how to actually work through the transitional period, leaving one love behind and, and going into a new one? To me, it's one thing and one thing only. It's passion. It's, it's passionate. If you are... If you've been working in a company for as long as I have, and I was very passionate about this company, as you heard, uh, I still have a lot of passion towards these guys. Um, if you're very, very passionate about something and you've been working in an industry for a very long time as I was, but you have this opportunity that your heart is telling you this is the right way to go, but you feel like if I go that route, there's a risk. Um, but if I stay here, there's comfort, there's, um, what word am I looking for? There's uh, that peace of mind. Assurance. Assurance. That peace of mind that you know you're going to wake up and you're going to have job security and all that stuff. That's awesome to have, especially nowadays where things are, you know, kind of tough. But my advice is this is not, this is a real life thing here. There's no redos. There's no, you don't have another opportunity at this thing. You have one crack at it. And if, if a window opens up to you, in an industry that you absolutely love, whether it's cigars, selling cars, selling clothes, hair designing, whatever it is, be passionate about what you're gonna do and that should take you away from that hump of leaving the nest, leaving the comfort zone. Your passion, if you have that drive, that fire, that passion, it should take you above and beyond where you need to go. And that's what I use every single day when I wake up. Because listen, we've had doors close on us because maybe it's, you know, this product's not for everybody. But I've gone to places where you would never think that, hey, why Opus Sex Society? No, why not Opus Sex Society? If the store owner is passionate, all it takes is one guy to walk in that door and says, ooh, that's a nice humidor. Ooh, that's a nice leather bag. That's a nice cigar case, those lighters. How many times have I been in a shop where I've had the stuff with me? You've saw it. Yeah, I noticed it. And, off and top. I was like, oh wow. Guys, <laughs> well, guys and girls. Because now women, awesome. They're that you're seeing more and more women in this industry. To go back to answer your question, because I squirreled a little bit, is passion drives you, man. And passion drives me all the time. That's my advice to everybody out there. Is like if you want to do something and you're very passionate about something, that passion should drive you to whatever it is you decide to do. Absolutely. Before we before we switch gears, right? He mentioned earlier, as far as like his role now, doing everything that he can on his end and from a company standpoint to help the retailers. Retailer who's been with us since day one. Edwina Brown and the family here at Blowing Smoke Cigar Lounge. Hey everyone, Edwina Brown here, owner operator of Blowing Smoke Cigar Lounge. We're located at 1604 North Interstate 35E in Lancaster, Texas. We would love for you to come see us. We stand on the three C's, which are cigars, our community, and our culture. Cigars, we have over 300 SKUs in our humidor and it's still growing. Come check it out, a massive humidor. We also love our culture here, which we're about customer service as well as community, which is why we're excited to partner with the Vision Lab podcast. So come check us out. Uh, great humidor, great staff, great atmosphere. Uh, we can't we can't preach to you enough, preach it to you enough. Make sure you get here to Bowling Smoke Cigar Lounge. Great ownership too. By the way. Absolutely, right. absolutely. So as we 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 look forward now, right? Obviously, beautiful line of products like Visionaries. If you see, you will see. I can testify. You will see Manny out at at. A random lounge in DFW, you can count on it, especially if him new house in the area. Like you, you will see Manny out. Beautiful products, right? Last year, two parter. As the company continues to grow, as Manny's popularity just continues to boom, what's the next step? And I know, I, I know you talked about stuff that's coming out, right? And I'm sure there's kind of something you got to hold close to the vest. But 
what's the next the next step up? Because you guys are clearly moving in the right, right direction. Oh, I love that question. Uh, the next step to me is keep it fresh. Keep it fresh. It's there's there's a very um, there's a need for creativity. You can buy it, man. I've owned and, and I'm going to keep names out of this. I've owned I own so many lighters throughout my lifetime. You're one of those guys, so, too. I'm, I'm starting one to collect them, too. So is this guy. I'm starting to collect them. So many cutters, so many lighters. My wife can attest to this. Carry cases from XYZ to ABC name company. My thought for this company is always keep it fresh. And I'm working for a guy who believes in keeping everything fresh, keeping everything new, cutting edge. Boom, 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 boom. If it's going to be a, a carry case, if it's going to be a humidor, if it's going to be a cutter, if it's going to be a lighter, make sure it's a, cu a cut above everyone else's, whether it be functionality or whether it be how it looks, how, how people look at it, how people are proud when they buy it. And I've been on the other end of that stick where I'm at the lounge and, and I'm, I help the store owner sell it to a patron. The high that I get, two part, when the owner opens up their humidor and proudly displays it and we're a member of the Opus X Society, and then a patron walks in when you're in that shop, giving that product to the store owner, and then the patron buys the product, you're like, did you see the face of that guy? Did you see the face of that wife when she buys the humidor and the cases and the lighters for, for her husband or boyfriend? It's it's awesome. Then when the women buy it for themselves. Yeah. So what I see is trying to come up with a, 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 a thing for women you know, gear aligned towards women and continuing to uh, improve on on our humidors, make them different. The next the next phase of humidor is going to be completely different than what we have now, uh, completely different designs. Um, and it's going to be well received. He's got this grin on his face because he's already seen some yeah, of this stuff, I'm it, sure. It's really cool seeing the passion exude from, I, I from, get from to, you. I get to Miami and he's photographing our latest edition that's coming soon. And I'm like, are you done with that? <laughs> he goes, yeah, why? I goes, because it's mine. I'll take, I'll take that, sir. Same thing happened with the, uh, the Opus X bracelets, which they have sold out already three times fold. So we, we order a certain allotment at a time because we wanna keep it, I wanna keep people you know interested. We mm -hmm. have a black, we have a brown, and this was the first bracelet we ever got. So this is one of X yeah. amount. So he's taking pictures of this and it, you know, sterling silver. It's got, you know, That's Opus nice. X Society and Fuente Lover on it. And and it comes in black and it comes in brown. So I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this and and uh, I'm like, That's nice. He goes, Yeah, those are the bracelets. And I'm like, So how many of those do we have? He goes, No, but we have that one and we have the brown one. I'm like, so you done with that? He goes, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's my. <laughs> I want to have, I mean, I told him if we designed the Opus X Society underwear, I want it. And I want to, I want to have it with me wherever I go. I go eat at restaurants and the restaurants don't allow you to smoke cigars. No problem. I don't care. I go and I travel with my case and I put it on the table. Sometimes if, if the lighters are, yeah, I put the lighter on the table too. Nine out of 10 times, whoever who comes to serve you or whoever who comes around you, they look. And they look, they can't help but look because the colors, the the design of it, the the whole carbon fiber case, the whole indestructible thing, it catches people's eye. The product sure. whether, for itself. Whether it's that, whether it's the cutters and the lighters and the, you know, everything we have, you'll always find me carrying something. Fuente Opus X. We don't carry cigars, but I'm wearing the Opus X pin on my jacket. Yeah. Whatever I can get my hands on, and I, I buy a lot of my stuff, the cigars, we don't carry them, but... I buy them everywhere I go. And nine out of 10 times I give it to people. Have you ever had an Opus X in your life? No? It's it's fantastic stick, I can promise try you that. that. <laughs> Hemingway, I, I, didn't, what, what, Heming, I didn't know what a Hemingway was. I, I, I never smoked a Hemingway, it's not my gauge, it's not. A store owner gave me a Hemingway classic and I'm like, okay, this is a little big, but okay, here's the Hemingway signature. I'm like, wow, what an incredible cigar. So it's our accessories and it's the cigars and whether or not I have cigars, I don't care. I'm going to push those cigars because it's what I love. If I loved, you know, another company, XYZ company, I, I would say, hey, this is my favorite cigar. And I would and I would push that cigar. But I love everything that has to do with Fuente. And then I had the pleasure of meeting the man, which I did a long time ago at a Hublot uh, red carpet in mm. Brickell in Miami that Manny took me to. 
That was the first time I got to meet the I man. Only imagine the atmosphere at a Hublot show in Brickle Mountain. Oh, and Brickle, fire. I can only imagine. Oh man. Well, you mentioned fire. They had Louis Trez. You're familiar with the with yep. the uh, cognac. Yeah. They had a guy, you know, with the gloves serving this, and and we all got a little shot like this big. <laughs> I'm not a big drinker uh, at all, actually. I don't even drink beer. And I had a little sip of this thing, and this fire just went down my throat. But just the mere the mere fact that I was in this ambiance. Yes, it was the atmosphere with this, alone. With this thing. And I was recently divorced too. So I drove up in a BMW. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> it's like, I don't belong in this place. I'm like, but Manny was there. I felt comfortable. And then he goes, Roy, this is when I introduce you to Carlito Fuente. And I'm like, wow. Jaw hit the floor. I did. It did. I had, a, I had a little bit of this shock because, you know, you're a fan of his cigars. You meet the guy. This guy, without hesitation, a lot of people know me as a straight shooter. I don't blow smoke. Uh, no pun intended. Um, this guy's the real deal. This guy um, is the most humble person I've ever met in my life. And I've dealt with guys like him and, and more so in the insurance industry. And this guy just, I was in awe of the guy. And, and, and I'm a big talker, but when he talks, I just like, I just listen. And that was way back then. Then I became now where I am now, and, and you take a little bit a little bit of humble pie and 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 our Christmas our Christmas dinner that we had in December um they sat him next to me to my left and I was in I was in la la land <laughs> so I started playing around with our our carbon fiber cases and we have two of them and played around with the tops while everybody was talking and I, I mixed and matched and he looks at the the top and he goes well, Where'd that one come from? I said, well, this is me playing around. You know, if, if you buy two of the carbon fiber case, you now have four. You don't have four, you know, yeah. different ones at the time, but you can make four out of them. Right. He loved it. And uh, and that's that's how this love affair came. And, and we've been I've been seeing him more and more now and talk to him more and more. One of the best thing that's ever happened to me, truthfully, and this is going to sound very geeky. My birthday was February 6th. That day I was kind of struggling a little bit because I, I do miss my old man. He was the first one that called me every birthday. And uh, I was having a, a cigar in my backyard. My wife doesn't smoke cigars, but she loves the smell. Um, we're, we're, we're in the backyard of my old house in Fort Worth and I get a phone call. And I, I pick up the phone and it's Carlitos. And it's super loud. And I'm like, he goes, hey, Bobo, happy birthday. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> You're calling me on my birthday. He goes, see, Bob, how you doing? But it was so loud. So when I went to put it here so I can lower the volume, he was on FaceTime. Oh, wow. I'm like, <gasps> he goes, there you are, Bob. Oh, you look great. And I'm like, oh, my, look, I'm getting the goosebumps all over the place. I'm like, You're on FaceTime. Like that, like a little kid who just seen your biggest, you know, the, your biggest idol. And I'm like, You're calling me on FaceTime. He goes, Yeah, of course. And then I, I calmed down because obviously it's not the first time I see him. So I'm like, Carlitos, you're not going to believe what I'm smoking. He goes, oh, you're probably smoking a Fuente. I said, yeah, not just any Fuente. I'm on a Desierto, the Dubai edition, the Opus X Dubai edition. So I show it to him. <laughs> he goes, nah. And I said, I didn't know you were going to call me and this is what I'm smoking. <laughs> and who gave me that cigar? He did. Nice. So, yeah, it's been it's been a great it's been a great ride, man. And I, I can't be more proud of what we've done and. The things that have happened to me the first day, November 1st, was my official first day. I tore my hamstring. Oh, uh, what? Moving that moving thing. stuff. Okay. I was, okay. I call it the beast. Everywhere I go, every shop I go to, I said, you know, I typically leave it in the car until after, you know, I meet the shop owner and, and the, the, the guys that work with them, the girls that work with them. I typically leave it in the car just because it's, it's, it's big and it comes in a big box. And, it, and besides that box, when you get it, it comes in an even bigger box. So the guy who was the, the director of sales with me at the sign for the upper United States, I'm helping him put his luggage in the car. And I, I just moved the humidor in my trunk of my car just from one side to the other. My body cooperated, my upper body, yeah, but my good. lower body <laughs> did not. And I heard a pop oh. and I went <gasps> and I felt nauseous. The sweat started happening. I thought I was gone. I thought I was going to pass out right there. And I'm like, mm. I'm not going to let this guy, the first day I meet him, see me like this. So it it felt so bad, like so bad. And I, I thought, oh, my God, not now, not today. Yeah. Because that day, unbeknownst to me, we were meeting Carlitos. 
35 <laughs> miles north of where I was. Jeez. True story. So I go to my hotel. I'm praying, please, God, don't let this happen. And it was getting worse. The pain was getting worse. So Manny comes to pick me up. Make a long story short, he picks me up. I'm walking out limping. Manny just stops on a dime. He goes, what happened? I'm like, I think I tore something on my leg. How did you do that? In the parking lot of Manny the Actor Enterprises. He goes, how come you didn't say anything? I said, because I'm not going to say it. It's my first day. <laughs> so we drive. I get in the car. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm sweating bullets like this. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Hey, everybody, don't mind our, 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 our director of sales. He, heard, he pulled his hamstring picking up a humidor. Don't mind it. Tore it. <laughs> and I didn't even pick it up. I moved it. He moved it. <laughs> so I wish I could tell. I wish I could tell people I was fighting off a lion. I wasn't fighting off a lion or defending my wife from a, from a, from an intruder. No, 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 no. I was moving <laughs> my humor in my trunk. So we went to our destination. We saw Carlitos again, which is a big thing. Carlitos didn't find out that I had a torn hamstring until the day we got up. The minute we got up to take a picture, and he and saw you struggling, and he saw me like. And Manny goes. I had a ball in the I back of my right leg. Ball up the back of your leg, yep. And listen, I can go on and on, but I had promised Jay's place. Jay Davis is, to me, he's one of the guys that I look up to most now since I got into this industry. Love the guy to death. Um, a store from Louisiana, which will remain nameless, walks into Jay Davis' place. And I'm there. And I literally made a sale with just a couple things on me to that store. And I told the guy, I said, listen, I promise you, I did not have a torn hamstring at that point. When I get back from Miami, on the way back home, remember, I don't fly. Mm -hmm. On the way back home, I give you my word. I'm going to be in Louisiana. I'm going to visit your shop. I'm a person of my word. Torn hamstring. Wake up at five in the morning like it's my typical thing. Get in my car and start driving to wherever it is I'm going. And I made a promise to this guy. And I got up at five o'clock in the morning. I got to Louisiana at about 9.50. He had been closed for 50 minutes, but he was waiting for me because I was talking to him. I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna be there. Wait for me. I was with him till about one o'clock in the morning smoking opuses with my torn hamstring. Yes. He did not know until I told him when I was leaving. Wow. And I said, I kept my word, I'm gonna be here. Got in, got in my car. Actually, I hadn't eaten anything. Went to my hotel, slept, got up the next day and drove the rest of the way to Texas with a torn hamstring, I haven't stopped since. Wow. So you're traveling, you get a chance to meet, greet the, the patrons to the, um, to the shops across the, the country. What's been the sentiment or the feeling that they get about where you guys are in terms of your accessories? And you know, earlier we were talking a little bit about like some of the things that Manny can do. What is, the, what is your audience saying? What, is, what are the patrons saying? Listen, what are they there, looking for? There are so many guys, especially on Facebook and Instagram. You guys have probably seen it. I know I've seen it um, that they are posting these things when they get them. They're so proud of everything they've gotten, you know, from from the first humidors to to the cutters, the lighters. And, and you guys haven't seen the, the other cutters and lighters, but uh, the carbon fiber cases, everything. Yeah, this carbon fiber case is it amazing. Is, it is a pleasure. It is a high for me. And of course, for Manny, it's very proud for for patrons to start receiving this stuff because again we were literally born before the pca but the pca is really where and i wasn't even there it's really where they took took off where people actually saw the stuff live and in the flesh because this stuff look i've, I've talked to many people over the phone and yeah we've done it but going there and showing them the stuff is is what we want to do getting the people hands-on with our stuff you know looking at our stuff and, and making sure that they know that top priority for the Fuente Opusex Society is the brick and mortar. Whether they're in Miami, all the way to Saskatchewan, I don't care, Puerto Rico, uh, um, abroad, everywhere. We want to do it slowly and getting to people little by little, one brick and mortar at a time. And giving them the utmost respect that they deserve because they've earned it. They, they've worked their tails off for their shops. Mm -hmm. So what we do on our end is a couple things. And, and, and we created this is when, whenever we add a person to the Fuente Opusex Society, we take a picture with them and we put it on Facebook. Sometimes we put it on Instagram and we will say, welcome to the Opusex Society XYZ Lounge. If you're ever in this area, please go by. And we have a following. Manny has a following. Carlito sees it on Facebook and he, you know, likes it or makes a comment about something and that 
you know, that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, but seeing the faces of the folks that get our stuff for the first time is the best. And we have fans out there now that don't even wait till this stuff is out. They're already pre-ordering it. The, the Opus X Ashtray, which I wish I had on me, but I have a sample, which is not near the, the, the actual product. We only made 250. Wow. Spanish porcelain, the real deal from Spain. And only 250. Only 250 That's limited. Right. And the the that, day I met him, he was like, we were just talking, going back where he was packing stuff up. And I remember him saying like, Oh, no, there's only X amount of these. Whatnot. I was just like, okay, we got to get Scott on the show. We got to. Yeah, we we want we believe in that limited count thing. We believe in, in, in having an exclusive product that everybody's like, okay, I got to have it. Um, and, and limit it to 250. And when it sells out, it sells out. These humidors, the Don Carlos is very, very near. The, the lighters, the cutters of Don Carlos is very, very near selling out. Once they sell out, we're never making that one again, yeah. ever. So now it becomes a collector's item. I have folks... I have a guy who's after me for the Don Carlos ashtray. The original ashtrays for this set is long been sold out. We don't have them. I have one Hemingway in my possession, which is the one that Manny gave me. And you ain't giving that I'm up. I'm not giving that up. <laughs> I had the Grand Reserve, which is just a red ashtray. That was the first one that sold out. That's mind blowing because the Don Carlos and the Hemingway are like, wow. And the Grand Reserve, it's just a really nice, robust red. That one sold out before any of the other ones. Wow. So the ashtrays, the original collection of the ashtrays, gone, sold out. That That is mind-boggling to me. The, the duffel bags, uh, our first original order, sold out. Our second, sold out. The the ashtrays, I was just telling her, the ashtrays, we ordered 250. And in less than 24 hours is that you call patrons. And I have my, my list that I go down the list. And I'm like, okay, give me 10. Give me 15. I'm like, uh, these aren't $30 <laughs> ashtrays. No, give me 10, give me 15, 24 hours later, they're sold out of the store. The store sells them out. So they're calling me and doing reorders. Mm -hmm. So the yellow one, we I think we only have like 30 left of the yellow one uh, around that number. And we're going to come out with a different color and, and so on and so forth. But keep with the 250 count and so forth to keep it, keep the interest there to keep that fire going. And that's just the asterisk. Yeah. So passion is one of the kind of underlying things I'm, you know, we're, we're hearing and seeing it, right? But you made this switch from insurance to cigar accessories. At a certain point, it all you know, you're a married man, like you got real life bills and stuff like that. At a certain point though, it's gotta work. Oh yeah. So when was your light bulb or your fork in the road where you're like, this is gonna work? Because like you said, you left the only company you'd ever known for essentially your entire professional life and made this gigantic leap. At what point you're like, okay, this is going to happen? I believe hundred percent in honesty and not blowing smoke. That day I showed up to the shop and David said, let me give you a hypothetical. That's the day that I knew it was gonna work. I would have never, ever given it a second thought if that question would have posed to me and I didn't have a feeling in the world that this wasn't going to work. Never, ever, ever in a million years. I left Miami that day and I was still on vacation. And I went, first phone call I made, because my wife wasn't with me, First phone call I made was to my wife. And I said, you're never gonna believe what just happened to me. I mean, take a guess. Hmm. <clears throat> and, and I told her and she was like, wow, you sound excited. And I said, I am. Cause you know what? I have not zero doubt that this is the right move for me. And this is coming from a guy who bled green. Green was the color of our company conifer, conifer the tree. I bled conifer green. That's all you'd ever know. It's, it's exactly. I'm not going to say I grew up there because I worked for another insurance company when I was 17, <clears throat> AIB, that I bled AIB for many years. I grew up there and I was loyal to them. I got offers from so many other companies. Hey, come with us. We're going to give you X amount more, you know, because I was always doing well wherever I went. But when I went to that warehouse on that June or July and I saw that place and I know who I'm talking to. Manny, who I've known forever, who I've seen his his progression, his his triumphs, his his man, his just his being. It's me, but on the insurance side, mm -hmm. I'm the same guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm nowhere near like mental capacity. This guy is above charts, right? So we mesh. It works. So when I left to answer your question, is that same day? 
did it did it give me a lot of trouble saying to my guys, hey, I gotta go, I gotta go? Yeah, hell yeah. But that same day when I was there, that was the day. I so, so you kind of touched on a little bit. We 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 know it's passion. Follow your passion. Mm -hmm. Get that. You had a great benefit in knowing people already there at the mm -hmm. company. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious, since we do talk about growth mindset, what type of mindset does someone have to have when they're making a transition like you've done? And these are not like, you know, sister industries. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're talking cigar accessories oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. insurance. Obviously, the vehicle sells and, and it's the same like sales to sales. But what type of mindset do you have to have or does someone have to have whenever they're transitioning into a new new industry? 100 percent confidence in the person you are. OK. There's, 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 I told you a little while ago, you have to have passion. The second thing you have to have, maybe even as, as, as even as the passion is the confidence in yourself that you can make it happen. And, and I knew when I went there that day and I, I, listen, I had no idea this question was going to be posed to me at all, but whether it be Opusex society or, or anybody else, if somebody would have come to me, it, it took, it had to have a, a name behind it for me to even consider leaving. And, and Manny is one of the few people on this earth that knows me to my core, like to my core. And uh, and I said, listen, if I I, I am 100 percent confident in, in what I can do, but I'm also 100 percent confident in what he can do. Right. Um, and that's that's the other thing to answer your question is 100 percent confidence in what you can do. And, and I have that passion. Yeah, I have a lot of that um, and confidence. I have a lot of that. And, and, and I got to give props to. I mean, I keep mentioning her name, my wife, Christina, she's, she's been that person to kind of that push that you kind of need that backup, that support right. that you need. Cause without that support, you're kind of working by yourself. You're like, you got to yeah. convince this person. Cause at the end of the day, it's going to affect her. And there's been months that I've been gone for three weeks out of the, out of the month and, and you don't stop Yep, and you don't fly. So you and, are on the road. Exact Amanda. So I, I've been working on the whole flying thing. For her, mostly, not so much for me, because I don't care. Uh, I'll just switch the car into a faster one and whatever. Uh, but it's it's that confidence, man. And she's, ever since I met her, she has been that person that's uh, incredibly talented person, incredibly loving person that has pushed me to have that confidence. I've had it, I had it before, but she kind of like nudged it over the edge and saying, hey, you could do this. And that's all I needed uh, to put me at that position that says, hey, I'm ready to rock and roll. I hope I answered that question. No, yeah, absolutely. Not, you're, you're, you're doing great. Um, this being the vision lab, I have to ask, and I can't wait to hear you answer. Shoot. What's the long term vision for you, Roy? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, listen, I, I've my history has always been. I love that climb that corporate ladder thing. This is a little different with this. I, I want the Opus X Society and Manny's name to be not just domestic, but global. Good. Um, similar to. Uh, when you hear the name Carlito Fuente, you can you can be in, in Dubai, you can be anywhere and everybody knows who Carlito Fuente is. I, I see that vision for me is the Opus X Society and Manny's name all over the place, not only here, but abroad as well. As far as I'm concerned, uh, I, I, uh, I would love to see myself having a lounge one day um, and, and, and doing that. Um, but that's a long term goal. That's something when I'm ready to, to hang up, uh, you know, hang up the sword and hang up my my stuff that I'm ready to, you know, and then take it to the next level and, and maybe having a shop. But that's us a long way down the road. Right now, I am one thousand percent committed to to the success of this place and seeing uh, my friend and my brother uh, succeed the way he's succeeding and, and, and so on and so forth. And there have been there. I've been tested. Uh, they test your they test your. Um, they test your your will. They test uh, my endurance was tested with the whole hamstring thing. But you go through those walls and I love going through walls. It's like a big high for me. So, yeah, that's that's my answer to that question. I love it. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Rob, we got to ask this question. You know, obviously you're on the show. How can our visionaries get a hold of you? How can they follow what you're doing? Keep up with you? Do you have any social media handles that you can get out there? Uh, yeah. Um, Facebook, it's kind of weird because I, I, I always told my wife, I'm like, babe, you know, the whole photography thing, um, my Instagram, I had like 
I think it was 150 followers and it was just family members and people in the, right. you know, athletic industry and whatnot. And, and they would follow me because of the photography stuff. Mr. Incredible. My son came up with that name uh, because I sold insurance and I was a bigger guy than what I am today. <laughs> and he compared me to the Disney character <laughs> in, the, in the Incredibles. Where Mr. is my super suit? Mr. Incredible. And, <laughs> and, and I kind of, you know, I was that guy, the insurance guy. So he came up with the Instagram tag, Mr. Incredible, but he, he kind of worded it a little differently because uh, you can't, Mr. Incredible was taken. So right. he kind of changed it. But when you look at it, you can see it's Mr. Incredible. And on Facebook, it's just Roy Vieira. But, uh, you know, you can go on our website, you can go on Facebook, on Instagram through Mr. Incredible. And everything that I do uh, promoting the the brick and mortar and, and our progression is going to be 95% on Facebook and maybe 5% on Instagram. I try to keep Instagram as a as a personal thing and I post everything there. But I went from, as the months go by, I went from 200 to I think 1,000 and then Instagram almost at 1,000. I'm like, how how did this happen? And and Manny tells me, he's like, people are starting to recognize you. People are starting to hear your name. And, and even with Carlitos, Carlitos, I mean, come on, man. It's like, he, he, he we've He's done. We, we've talked to each other. We had dinner the other day and I have to mention this because we had dinner in Miami at the uh, Smith and Walensky the other day. And uh, I had a thought. I'm like, I would love, because he's here in Miami. We're doing an event at the surf club and uh, a very limited event, small, invited a few people. Carlitos was here for that event, which was an honor. Um, I, I said, you know what? I have a thought. And um, I told Carlos, I said, I would love to have you sign 13 Don Carlos Humidors. Now you ask, why 13? Well, 13 is in the logo of, of the Don Carlos design, is don't rush the hands of time, the, the clock, 13 is on there, it's a logo. So I said, I want, I mean, not 10, not 20, 13. I want you to sign 13. And he was immediately taken by that idea. And then I said, I wanna take it a step further. I want to number them one through 13 mm. and I want to, I can literally make a phone call to X, Y, Z. You, you know, the people, and I could just say, Hey, I have 13 humidors signed by uh, Carlito Fuentes. You know, what's say you, my first phone call, they would have said, give me all 13. Yeah. But I, I thought a step further and I said, you know what I want to do? I want to call 13 brick and mortars, 13 different ones yeah. that have supported us that, that support the brand, whatever. And that's exactly what I did. And and this, he was there, I believe this was a Thursday event. He was there around 4.30. I had to be in Miami Beach by seven with the traffic, which is unbelievable. I had to be at seven. From the time that he signed the humidors to the time that event, I had to be at that event. I sold nine humidors. But what I did was I wanted to go a step further. I'm like, I, I wanna give this to the brick and mortar at cost. Like if it was a regular humidor with no signature, I want the brick and mortars to benefit. And that's exactly what we did. And it was awesome. And it was great to just make those phone calls and say, hey, would you be interested? I thought of you, would you be interested? Did anybody say no? Of course not. not. one no. person, not of course one not. person. Are there any left? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was what the next day by, and, and only because the event happened. Because if not, if I would have had another Hour. 25 minutes, yeah. 25 minutes, done, yeah. all 13. But by the next day, I think it was 10 o'clock in the morning, they were they were gone. Did like, you get any? No. You didn't keep one? No, I didn't. He's got enough collector's items. No, that, away, I'm it's, sure. that's a real special it's, one it's too. It's funny, uh, it's funny because uh, Belkis and I uh, were talking about that uh, before he got there. I'm like, should we you know, just buy one of these ourselves and have it signed and just keep it for ourselves? And I'm like, no, nah, let's not do that. So Carlitos gets there. Um, and he's got cigars in his pocket. Like he always carries cigars. He comes to me and, and, and we have, I have all the humidors ready to rock and roll. And he gets these three cigars, which are cigars. He gives them to me. He goes, hold on to this. I'm like, okay. So he starts signing, but, but when he's done, I give him back the smokes. Mm -hmm. He goes, no, those are for you. Good job. Mm. I'm like, I'm sorry. What? These aren't regular cigars, I might I might add. So at that particular moment, I thought about Belkis. So I grabbed one of the three and I gave it to her right like 
instant like gave it to her mm. and then i don't know i don't remember because it's my mind's foggy i don't know if it was manny or, or carlitos because that's why you are who you are and that was one of the best nights i've ever had so far and there's been so many and that torn hamstring that's like it was horrible i couldn't put on my shoes i couldn't put on my socks and, and i hate asking for help my wife was a big help to me but that's a blip on the radar that i had a great time with the torn hamstring mm, that's awesome so it's it's been great it's been great having you on the show absolutely thank you for making this happen on yes, short notice for my sure. pleasure, shout man. out my to pleasure. you too p hey come on man yeah thank you Teamwork. thank you for the invite man i really appreciate it it was an honor being here it was a great shop and uh yeah. thanks for having me man so as we close the interview out we are we're gonna land the plane as we call it it's you there is a round table there are five other seats you get to have five other people at the table with you. Obviously, you smoke whatever Fuente product you like. I love this question. The only caveat is, or yes. stipulation, if you will, yes. you cannot have whatever religious deity you believe in. But outside of that, what what was the final thing? You can't have whatever religious entity that you believe in. No, no, no. Because that's too easy. That's too easy. No, this question is really easy. Who are the five people you want at your table? Who now, they can be dead or alive. Oh, boy, that's tough. <laughs> I hope I don't get emotional on this one. My father has to be there. Yeah. yeah. My father has to be there. He's he's the one that I am. I am my father. I mean, there's no no doubt about it. I would say my son, but I have my son at at, a, at my call. I can pick him up the phone and see him. My father's number one. But in a in a a world like this one, where this could actually happen, Andy Garcia. Okay. Would be first. Would be. I believe so. Yeah. Andy. Yeah. The guy from PCA told us what uh, Mom Desante. Yeah. I, mean, I think you're the first one to say Andy Garcia. Yeah, Andy Garcia to me would be I've heard awesome. he's a great time. Carlito Fuente, for sure, has to be in that table. Okay. It's Man, three. Manny Diate has to be in that table. That's four. Um, man, I'm going to say someone who doesn't smoke cigars. Okay. My wife. Yep. It's a very that good table. To me, was That to me would be the ultimate table, and it has to be in Ch Chateau Fuente. Okay. In the Dominican Republic. That's my perfect setting. Now so you're going to have to fly. Yeah, you're going to get on a plane <laughs> or ride in the boat. I, I made a promise to a couple of people that I will get on a plane. Okay. And that is going to happen. Just fly, fly first class. And that way you're not crammed in there. Yes. You can relax a little yes. bit. <laughs> you, even though you don't drink, you can have, you know, maybe one or two cocktails to get you, you know, yeah. relaxed. If, if only water and iced tea on sweet could do that to you, it'd be <laughs> awesome. But no, have drop a little drama in there. Yeah. You'll go to sleep. You'll be all right. That's right. doesn't work for me, man. I'm, I'm 6'4". You're going to have to hit me with a sledgehammer. <laughs> um, in case you didn't know, we have a magical time machine here okay. in the lab. Okay? okay. What advice would Roy be giving himself from five years ago? <sighs> what would Roy give himself five years ago? We told you this is going to be a different interview. Listen more and talk less. That's a good one. Listen more and talk less. Be appreciative for what you got. Appreciate every day that you got on this earth because this is not, you don't get another opportunity. So that would be my answer. That's great. That's a phenomenal gym. Um, we're going to fast forward the clock five years from now. Okay. Okay. What's the older version of yourself? If he's looking back at you today, in today's times, um, what advice is he giving you today? Have more fun. Have more fun. Uh, spend more time uh, doing things that you love with the people you love. That would be it. I love that. Absolutely love it. It's good. I told you we had a winner. For sure. For sure. Visionaries, thank you so much for tuning in to another great episode of the Vision Lab podcast. Remember, each one of our guests are dropping nuggets of wisdom here on the trail of life. Ultimately, it's up to you to pick them up. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ryan Mosley. He is Ryan Cuffey. Thank you to Roy Vieira. Uh, thank you guys for having me. It was an absolute honor and a privilege. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see you guys next week on another great episode of the Vision Lab podcast. Blessings. Blessings.